one of the most important endeavors I think any culture does is to help its young grow up and be in the world and be, uh, if not prepared, at least with some transferable skills that they can navigate a meaningful life and a meaningful path through existence for them, for their particular time. That's what we're supposed to be doing here, is like educating students, educating human beings, people to, you know, build a better life for everyone. Well, liberal education's always been important. It's, 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 uh, it's the basis for what any university does. Uh, the definition of a liberally educated person is a person who can support themselves and who can make a contribution to society. And, you know, those are pretty broad definitions, but, but that's an obligation that, that everybody has. So the university has to impart those skills. Plus, plus this ability to, to contribute to, to society. Um, and, and so I think that's always core. And universities don't teach that. That's something that students extract from their program. Most universities, including where I went, you know, you just focus. I just did math. The first year I did uh, mathematics and physics and uh, chemistry. The next year was just mathematics and physics. And, and then the fourth year, third, fourth year was just mathematics. And whereas here they would all, you, you, well, you have to do, you can only do 13 for your major. And then you, the other uh, 27 uh, spread out, which I liked. I, I liked that right, right from the start, that, the, the liberal arts. Uh, it gives them a broader education and uh, they can look into other possibilities. I think that there's a lot of different views about the role of education, you know, let's say specifically the role of university education. Um, my own view, which I think you'll find many professors be comfortable with some version of this, my own view is very old fashioned, which is that small l liberal education and the, the number one, our number one job is, is to teach people to think for themselves. Even way back in the day, it was always a liberal arts university. So even when it was just undergraduates here, the focus was on breadth of, you had to show that you had enough breadth in your university transcript in order to graduate. So there was no focused programming. And I think that was brilliant, actually, right from the start, because I took classes I never in, <laughs> never on earth ever would have taken. I, I felt I was, should be focused on science and chemistry and physics and biology and all the rest of the stuff was fluff. And thankfully, I had to take English and I had to take sociology classes and psychology classes where I learned that my real passion is about the brain, not about chemistry, physics, and biology necessarily. So uh, if it hadn't been for that breadth requirement, I'm not sure I'd end up in the field that I'm in. They had come out of high schools where the facilities were limited in many cases, and suddenly, uh, as happens even right today, uh, students come out of high school, they're suddenly in this totally new atmosphere. We encourage them to learn all sorts of new techniques and so on and so forth, explore new areas. Um, why not take chemistry and poetry or something like that, you know? Good idea. Broaden your whole perspective on life. Students come to universities with their preconceived notions, their views of religion, their views of the world, their so-called common sense, right? And they're going to get challenged in the university. And anybody who, who's got a belief system, a religious system, uh, a set of common senses are going to be challenged by somebody else's belief system, common sense, so on and so forth. So it's a big challenge to, to confront those universe, those students and, and allow them to allow them to find new ways of doing things and to change. When the students come to the classroom, they're afraid of learning. They're, oh my God, I'm coming from the high school and I'm going to the university or from colleges, it's a different environment. So then we have to immerse them, that how, how it looks like. So first we help them to immerse themselves back into the system. Then they can transform themselves, they can learn on their own, and they can learn from the instructors. In the past, I think in some respects, we were a little bit more like that sage on the stage. So you had some knowledge, you just kind of you know talked about that knowledge, students took the notes, ended the class, and they walked away. 
Today, you don't need to do that, obviously. Students have access to all types of information. If anything, it's information overload. So your role, I think, as an instructor in the class in terms of enhancing student learning is almost to act as a facilitator of the knowledge. You can find information on anything you want to a very high level. It's the interpretation and translation that's all important and all important uh, to the student. And being a good translator, I think, is a marvelous role for an educator. And they're trying to find that edge. They're trying to find that advantage. And I think as educators, we are that advantage. It's uh, those footsteps that we've taken in our fields in life that uh, allow us to be the, the guides. When I'm teaching undergraduates, I don't, in, the, in a neuroscience course, they're not neuroscientists. What, what is it that I want them to leave with and remember 10 years from now? I have to be able to identify that because that's my job. If they're going to be neuroscientists, there's lots of time to learn all the factoids. They're probably wrong anyway. They're going to be changing all the time, but they need the concepts. We understood that they were learning a process, a systematic process, to collect information and make good decisions. And that even if they never go on for a graduate degree, they will carry on that skill in whatever they do, whether that be uh, being a parent volunteer in their child's school or being on a ward or being in a public health unit. That that kind of information is powerful. And when people begin to understand that if you collect good data, good evidence, you, ha you hold power in your hands and you can do things. You can be an advocate in your community or an advocate for the other nurses on your ward or whatever it is. And we want individuals graduating who are critical thinkers, who are very reflective of what they've done and can make a difference and have that passion and move forward in that. Right now I'm teaching ancient Hebrew and I have a really great group of students. And again, I try not to speak too much in that class. We just take turns reading lines in ancient Hebrew. And a student will ask a question, I got stuck on this and I try not to give them the answer. I try to get them to ask other students in the class. And now they've started just doing that without even going through me first. They just immediately ask one another about the question, and that's great. I mean, that's where I see that it's successful. They're feeling very frustrated because they're at this stage in, of learning an ancient language where they can just, they're just struggling, they can kind of make sense of it, but they ha can't fully make sense of it on their own yet. Right? So it's a frustrating time for them, but I can see that they've reached this level very much quickly, much more quickly that way than by me just telling them, oh no, this is what this word is, this is what this word is. Because again, there's no point, right? I, uh, f just to give them these answers, right? The point is the struggle. It was a top-down kind of thing. Uh, the professor will teach and they'll come and see it and read books. Now the, the interaction brings between the students and the faculty. And in some cases, what I, have, I have to ask them to come and present their ideas in the classroom setting so that they can learn from themselves, you know, the peer, peer learning across uh, the students rather than from the faculty. It's stunning. It's stunning what they can produce when you turn them loose with technology and give them a focus goal and they know they're going to be up against the peer pressure of the rest of the class who are going to knock, uh, you know, fantastic uh, presentations together. So it's a combination of technology, of method of doing this, of peer pressure, and of a passion. And I would see students go from what I would call a high C student to a, a low A student, just because they, 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 they found the spark. There was something in one of the courses or one of the professors that they were learning from that just uh, transformed them into a, a different person and they, they became a new individual where they all of a sudden got focused on something they wanted to do themselves. Students want more practical education so they're all they're good with the theory but they want to know how what the practical applications are and it seems to me whenever I have an opportunity to do professional development for people they also want to know what is the practical advice that they can get based on what the research is telling us so they they don't want to just know what the research is, they want to know that extra step. And so st I find students are clamoring for more and more of the practicalities of um, a university education. What can they actually take from it that they can apply? Students get engaged when they see value. Um, students today, again, are inundated with time pressure. So as a young person, you say to yourself, okay, I could spend you know, an hour here or an hour there, right? Why do I choose to spend an hour here rather than there? And it's because I'm getting something from that hour, from that, right? So the idea is, again, the engagement comes in terms of, again, igniting that spark, showing why there's value in what we're talking about. I always say to students, look, in a lot of our classes, you could lock yourself in a corner, study, 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 walk out of this class with an A.
That A has no value at all to you in the long term if you actually forget about everything two hours after you write your final. I want you to develop an attitude that this material is not just important for you to understand for an exam or for this semester. It's important for you to understand this foundation for the long term. And so I want you to retain that knowledge, right? And so the idea is, is that if I can provide an environment for student learning where students are engaged, they see the value, they get to have fun with the knowledge. Students are more engaged. Um, they're they're less likely to take something you say at face value. Um, you know, they'll challenge you. They'll ask deep questions um, and want answers. Um, and they, they don't settle for you glossing over um, or giving a half answer. And I like that. And so I think that engaging students may be something that is more important now. I, you know, I haven't study and analyze this, but I really think that students are so used to quick turnover of ideas, getting them to focus and focus on you and focus on the idea is probably something that's a skill that's more important now perhaps than it was in the very traditional classroom that I grew up in as an undergraduate student in an Australian university which pretty much followed the British system of education. It was, you know, the instructor walks in, stands in the front, spouts on for the required amount of time and leaves and was a very remote person. And I think partly in North America things are different, but partly I think over time that relationship with students has in fact changed. Uh, but engaging students is something that you always need to do. And I don't think the, the necessity of being able to excite the students about they should be pleased that they're taking this particular course. Sometimes they're only taking it because it fills a requirement. But still, you would hope that by the end of the course, they say, well, I actually learned something in that course. And you know, it was informative, educational. I can think about something from a different perspective now. They were really eager, and the classes were small. That was really the nice thing about it. And so um, they... Uh, they were really interested in learning. And that, at least that's my impression from the students I ran into. I think it was generally true. That they were really interested in learning and they were really interested that there was a university right here in Lethbridge that they could attend. With an intimate class, it's really hard to teach them bulk material. You know, you know it has to be much more pers personal. It, it has to go slower. And it, and it was, you know, when you write on the blackboard, it takes a second. It takes a second for the students to copy it down. And so there's this constant interchange between you. When you teach a class of 300, you send the lectures to them before the class. So if they want, they can go through the lecture. Uh, if they don't come to class, they can get the lecture and go through it. Uh, the, the interaction uh, is just as intimate. It, and there's more opportunities for it. I mean, they, they, they know the lecture beforehand. They, they can have a copy of the lecture. They don't have to take notes. Uh, they can do something that you can never do in an intimate class. You can learn how to listen and extract information. It's small in size in terms of the other universities that I attended. Uh, the class sizes are smaller mm -hmm. so that uh, they have more interaction with the students. And you have more intellectual exchanges between faculty and the students. The students demand more. Uh, they know what they're looking for. They look at the industry. They look for whether they would be career ready or the market ready. And they go on co-op and other uh, experiential learning way of doing things. And they learn from outside the classroom as well. And they bring knowledge into the classroom. So that gives different perspective for the educators as well as the other students who did not go on there. So is a melting of what is happening in the society coming to a classroom that we need to interact and, you know, and learn. One of the big changes for students is the co-op program. Uh, and that is huge for us. Uh, about 20% of our students are in the co-op program. And we've had that now for, I think, close to 20 years. And so students go away and they work for a company for four months, eight months, maybe even a year, and they might have a couple of those terms. And I, I find that when they come back, they're more mature, of course. They, they're more focused. 
They know what they want to what they want to do. Sometimes they know what they don't want to do. They come back and they know what they need to learn. So they have demands as to, you know, I need more networking. And, and sometimes they bring back skills that um, we don't know about or, or software that they've used and perhaps is proprietary and we can't uh, get at it. But at least we, it, it informs our teaching as well. I think experience is one of the key factors uh, for those people, giving them different experiences and accommodating those experiences within uh, the credentials that they're after is an important part. I'm a big fan of co-op uh, education, for example, because I think it allows students to have a window on, on, on where that credential may be taking them, to have uh, insights as to why certain things are learned within that degree may be important to the future. So I, I, I think experiences are very important. International experiences are even more important for students. Get to know the world as it is because I don't think many of our students will think that you know, they're going to stay their whole life in southern Alberta. Getting out and about, experiencing cultural difference, um, experiencing a different way of life I think is an important part of any education. My f experience as a student was so positive. I loved being a student here right from the, the beginning. I started in the late 70s and I enjoyed my classes. I just thought this university was terrific. Then I thought I, after I graduated I'd like to try graduate school and I went to the University of Alberta. It was a huge surprise for me how classes ran there because they were so big and the teachers really didn't have much time for the students and so I really learned to value the kinds of experiences that I'd had at the University of Lethbridge as a student. Uh, then I came back and did my master's degree and PhD here as well. So I've had lots of wonderful experiences as a student in this university. Students are under tremendous, tremendous pressures right now, uh, financially, as, as a really big one. So that affects everything that occurs. Um, many of our students have to work one, two jobs in order to come to university. How, can that, how does that affect my demand that they practice three hours a day, seven days a week? I sometimes worry about students today. It seems like uh, they take a lot on, um, that they have a lot of pressures that maybe they didn't have 10, 15 years ago, especially as it relates to kind of just economics. Uh, you know, how do they afford to pay for school? Uh, I see, you know, some of them worry about the burden of student debt, things like that. And yes, it is a long life. And you talk to them about in investing and how this is a good investment on both time and money for their future. But we're seeing people that have full-time jobs more that have families, that are raising families. It was no one in my uh, first year class had children, for instance. So people are coming into it from a, you know, a different socioeconomic background. And it used to be that, you know, I don't want to say upper class, but you'd have to hope your parents paid for your education. And now people are really working for uh, their education in more ways than one. And they have greater, I think, time commitments outside of this learning place. Because they, they are now not typically just straight out of high school, we, we certainly do have some students that are straight out of high school, but many of them are uh, more mature students. And so many of them work uh, many, many hours uh, during the week, as well as being a student. Many of them have families and all kinds of obligations, and um, I have to admire many of these students, how they can do it all. And I don't know how they do it all. But even since I started teaching in 2004 to where we're now at uh, 2016, things have changed quite a bit. So uh, I see that students are they, they seem to be more driven to find a job as soon as they're finished university. They seem to have different set of expectations. When I came to university here, I knew that my training wasn't going to really lead me to a job directly, and that's why I decided I wanted to go to graduate school. But most students now are, are really looking for some, getting something that they can take from here and get right to work with. So uh, I think that's changed quite a bit, the student expectations. The U of L 
I think it's done really well because we had really good foundation at the start. We started with some really good people who set a standard for everybody else and there was that, because we were an undergraduate institution for a long time, uh, we, we treated uh, fourth year graduates undergraduate students as graduate students and so they got tremendous benefit from that and I used to interact quite a bit through research with the University of Calgary and they would always tell me we really like to have students send your students up here because they do better than our students do and the reason was is that they, they got a lot of personal hands-on uh, training um, before they even finish their graduation because you know we, without graduate students and if you're running a research program you need help in your lab, so you would get independent study students, uh, then they became applied study students in some cases, but you would have the students get involved in projects because you, you wanted them to get involved, and secondarily, you needed them to get involved to progress your own kind of research. And so uh, the students that would graduate from here, we had no graduate school, so they couldn't continue on at the UofL, they had to go somewhere else. And they, the reputation of the UofL students was very, very good from the feedback I had, and it was because of that close interaction. And so I think that that's continued even now. You still have uh, very close close interactions between the principal investigators, at least in the science departments, I'm sure humanities and social sciences are the same, in between them and the students. And it was a kind of a legacy that got carried on from, from the very early days when we, we got a really good start uh, with some very high quality people who, um, who really set the standard. Maybe with what we're doing today in the classroom, enhancing student learning, you'll play a role in kind of shaping that future, right? And uh, in some respects, you know, that's a good feeling. I also think there's a, some responsibility there as well, right? I, I mean, you know, you have to feel that you need to do a good job. Who knows what the next 50 years are going to be like? The idea, though, is that if we don't know what the next 50 years are going to be like, let's prepare ourselves with a toolkit so that whatever happens in the next 50 years, uh, our students are prepared to adjust and adapt and take advantage and have a fulfilling life no matter what occurs in, in the future. Because we should be preparing students for careers that aren't even uh, you know, developed yet. Um, oftentimes when you look at how new jobs come about, new industries come about, they weren't there when the students were actually in university. They came about after the fact, right? And so if you prepare people for things that are happening today, you're doing them a disservice. And again, that Liberal Education Foundation really provides a long-term perspective and provides them with that toolkit that I think will really help them in the long term.